Hi everyone, here's a list of commonly used tools in my aluminum fabrication shop. Safety first, 3M Z87 glasses. I like these because they're flexible. If you have a wider face, you can bend them that way, or if you have a narrower face, just bend them in. Good set of earplugs. I like this Heroes brand. These ones are soft and they have a really good decibel rating. And depending on your ear size, you'll maybe want different ones. I kind of have smaller canals. These are smaller. So I recommend getting several different types and trying them out and see what's most comfortable for you. 25B Tillman's, the M stands for medium. That's the size I wear. And the reason I like these gloves is they're very supple. You can feel what you're doing with them. They're not very durable though, like for grinding and stuff, they'd wear them out pretty quick. But for TIG welding, you can feel exactly what you're doing with the torch handle. And then using the TIG button, it's you can feel exactly what you're doing without big rough gloves. They do have a lot of lint on them when you first buy them though, so I just recommend going over a trash can for about a minute or two and just doing this and getting all the lint and fuzzies off so it doesn't get in your welds or on your parts. Dedicated stainless steel wire brush for cleaning aluminum. Don't use it for anything else other than aluminum. Acetone or non-chlorinated brake cleaner to clean your parts. Very important if you're using brake cleaner, it's non-chlorinated. If you use chlorinated when you weld on it, it creates phosgene gas and that'll asphyxiate you. And this is on Amazon. I, this is the first time trying this out and I'm really happy with it. How clean it cleans the parts. See how nice and shiny that bead is without any black sooting in it. The reason I don't use acetone is because I just like a readily available high pressurized can ready to go. I can just grab. I'm not always having to fill up pressurized containers with acetone. Ultra fine point sharpies. These are a lot more accurate to mark aluminum than bigger sharpies. This is my favorite brand too. I've tried several others. And my favorite color is blue or black. The contrast on aluminum shows up a lot better than like red or greens. 10 inch crescent, crest alloy, crescent wrench for your welding bottle and various other things. I like this one a lot. You can use your TIG welder on DC with pulse or turned on to engrave your tools too. That's another trick. A good set of welding pliers. These are matadors and I've had them for over 20 years. I really like them. Good for grabbing tungsten out if it's if your collets aren't in perfect condition. Or if you want to clean out a MIG welding nozzle. It's got those serrations on the outside. Then you can use this part as a hammer. Flexible rules, both 6 and 12 inch. It's kind of weird, but I like the ones that go in tenth increments for each inch. They're nice and flexible, so you can measure around round parts. Ball peen hammer with a short handle. I like that for when you're tacking parts and you're trying to, you need to get them to fit tighter, so you can tack them and smack them. And then this end, I round it just a little bit and polish it on a belt sander, so you don't have those sharper edges. Less likely to mar your surfaces. Machinist squares, big and small. They were good for parts on flat surfaces. Like say you were wanting to tack weld that on and make sure it was at a 90 degree angle. The threaded adjustable spray nozzle for your WD-40. I made this in a previous video. They're not available, but if somebody wanted to make one of those and mass produce it out of plastic, they'd probably become rich because of this I don't know, this is the stupidest design ever. This, when you push down, it side loads and binds, so you spray way more, way more WD-40 than you actually need. One of these will save you probably two to three times what you're normally using. This is what I use to clean my parts after I'm done welding a machine and I'm getting ready to ship. So if you have any light stains in your parts from coolant or water or whatever, um, concentrated simple green has a light etching characteristic to it, so it'll clean some of that off. And then for a final wipe down, I use Windex. And then I prefer, this is kind of nitpicky, but I prefer Bounty paper towels because I've tried several different brands of paper towels. And these ones, they, they have just the right amount of like abrasion for me without scratching too much. You can leave really, really fine brush with this and they don't leave lint on the parts like other brands. Four and a half inch angle grinders, both corded and cordless. 
I like this little DeWalt one. I've had this for probably 13 years, I think. And the reason I like this, so I like ones with paddle triggers. I don't like the off on switch up here because that's kind of a safety hazard. You know, if you get out of control, the grinder stays on. But if anything goes wrong with this, you just let off and it shuts off. And then this one, you can see the whole body of the grinder is up above the surface. So this is what I use to rebuff my, my welding plate to make it look nice. With this one, you know, with these ones with the battery hanging down, you can't lay them flat like a buffer. And that's also why I don't use a guard too, because I want to be able to use any side, any edge of it that I need to. And then you'll want some flat discs for your four and a half inch grinder. I've tried lots of different brands of these and you usually get what you pay for. These ones are two of my favorites probably. And I like the ones that have the threads integrated into them, not the ones where you have to use, have to use the threaded nut. Because a lot, some especially if you buy this kind, make sure that nut doesn't stick up too high because then you can't lay them flat. That's what I really like about these. Usually they have more, see how, see how deep that stack is of sandpaper squares? These last longer, so they cost more, but they end up lasting longer. And then if you wear them down on the edge too much, you know, from like grinding at an angle, which is pretty common, you know, you can go up to a bench grinder and grind that face down. See how this one's smaller diameter? That's what I've done with this one. I've grinded it. It rejuvenates that edge for you. That's a trick. Big wire cup wheels. These work great for steel work if you're trying to remove slag on like stick welds or mill scale off a of big steel. They'll t they're too heavy duty though. They'll tear up aluminum, so I never use them on aluminum. Great for steel though. A couple pair of calipers, expensive pair and a cheap pair for general fabrication use. You don't worry about scratching them or messing them up. They end up being a consumable item if you use them a lot. Easy lap diamond sharpening boards. These work real good. You can sharpen end mills with these or like just really intricate work, how they have a sharp crisp edge on them for sanding and touching up all sorts of stuff. Little box cutter that takes normal razor blades to open all your cardboard boxes. This works better than anything else because of how thin they are. They cut cardboard really fast. Various aluminum specific files. I've been using this one for 20 years to build all those elbows. They work real great for cleaning off saw cut edges and don't clog up near as bad and leave a smoother finish than general steel ones. Then this one, I guess you could call it more like a rasp style. This is really good for quick, heavy removal, shaping parts. Speed squares are super handy. A lot of times you'll want one where you grind that off so it clears a weld. Digital angle finders. I use these when I do EFI conversions on V8 intake manifolds when I'm setting, up in, setting them up in the mill. And then this little guy's neat too for finding angles and replicating them, laying out lines. Dead battery on this one because I don't use it very often, but it's pretty handy too. It'll tell you the exact angle that you have it at if you need to replicate or measure a part. A good compass with a fine pitch threaded screw so it stays in place. And then I just use a hose clamp and TIG weld on a little washer so you don't need any tools to, if you want to put a pencil in or adjust the length on the Sharpie. These types of squares, I ground that one off because I needed a clearance for something. But if you're wanting to do a bunch of parts that you need to have the exact same distance, or like in a bandsaw, you can use this as a stop. So when you're cutting your parts, they all end up the exact same distance. Really handy. A divider, it's like a compass. Ron Covell, hopefully he's watching this, he can leave a link down below in the video he used one of these, and I can't remember which video it was, but it was really neat seeing how he used it. He, I think he measured, you know, like out a certain amount, and then you can, if they're sharp, you can sharpen them, however sharp you want them. Push that in, you get a little mark, then walk it, and I think he walked it around a circle to get the exact spacing on every single spot. It was pretty neat. So yeah, Ron, if you're watching this, leave us a link below or somebody else leave us a link to that video where he used one. Putty knife, super handy for sheet metal work too. Back when I used to build garbage cans for grocery stores, if you were TIG welding long parts, outside corners, and you ended up not tacking it enough or you need to line up your joint so you have a good weld joint that's not you know, heating and warping around. If you have a tack here and a tack here, you can walk a putty knife in here and Bend, bend it out to exactly where you need it and then tack it. 
Good set of channel locks are a must. Small precision file set. These are really handy for touching up welds or like weld stops if you dork it and you put too much material on or touch your tungsten and you need to really intricately file a little small section off and touch it back up. Bubble levels for big fabrication jobs where you can just pull a string really tight and see how level it is. Not super accurate, but pretty useful. Quality levels of various sizes. I really like this Empire brand. Fiberglass heat pad, really important for welding aluminum, so you can rest your hand on it. Stay nice and steady if the part's really hot. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any more ideas, I got plenty more content for probably two more of these videos. This one ran about 10 minutes long, so I don't want to bore you. But let me know below if you have any questions about tools you've seen me use in previous videos or suggestions. I'll probably be making one or two more videos about this same length with a lot more of other tools I have. Stay tuned. And if you found this useful, please use my Amazon links below for everything I've shown. It doesn't cost you anything. It's all the same price. It just gets you on Amazon, and I get a little bit of cut of that. It helps me, helps support my channel so I can make more videos. Thank you.